Hi, something a bit different for my channel. Um, haven't really done anything to do with music at all um, in the few years I've been on YouTube. Um, but I've recently sort of got interested in playing guitar again. I've not played properly for probably 15, 20 years really since I was sort of in my teens. Um, owned a few guitars in the past, sold them all for various reasons, and uh, recently bought some new kit. Um, the kit these days really compared to what was around sort of 20 years ago, completely brilliant value, certainly to do with amps, digital modeling, absolutely fantastic. Um, so I thought for this video, I'd share the guitar I bought, which was the Epiphone G400 Pro. Um, so it's an SG style guitar. Um, and just go through some stuff about why I selected it, um, really from a beginner's perspective, because I consider myself a beginner. I've not played guitar for years. I'm learning all over again. I'm not investing big money. I've selected what I thought was good value kit. And uh, I thought it might be helpful to sort of share the reasons why I bought certain things. So the Epiphone is a fantastic guitar. Um, the RRP is about 299. Um, it's a pretty affordable, you can get much better prices online, you can get much better prices from in, um, sort of haggling at local stores. Um, so what I'll do, I'll take it over to the table and we'll get some close-ups all over the guitar because it's really hard to get the guitar away from the table now. Um, before I forget, you saw it earlier on with the um, Boss Katana, absolutely fantastic modelling amp. Um, I'll probably do a sort of, some sort of review on that at some stage on my channel. Again, probably trying to take the beginner's perspective why I selected it, why it's um, a good buy really. One of the things about it is it can operate at a half watt volume, which is really good for home use. Okay, but back on to the uh, G400. You know, why did I select this? Well, it's got that classic sort of shape, classic SG shape, rock and roll shape, really nice um, sort of, I don't know, the sort of the pointed horns. It just looks really good. Um, the red cherry finish um, shows through the, the wood really nicely. Um, something to say about the wood in a minute, um, but technically this is a all mahogany guitar, mahogany body, mahogany neck. We'll flip it over in a minute and we'll see the neck. Um, it's a set neck, so it's not bolted on, which is good for the tone. Um, yeah, just a really, really good guitar. Um, fixed bridge. So it doesn't have a tremolo, which in the past I've never really got much use of out of tremolo. Um, all tremolos really bring is a bit of fun on occasion, but it doesn't help tuning stability. And probably as a learner, someone beginning, I'd say keeping your guitar in tune, not having to constantly tune it, not having to work out whether it is in tune by ear, it's really quite a good thing not to have to worry about. So just looking at the body, because that's what we've got in shot now, Obviously you've got um, two humbucking pickups. So humbucking pickups are, are good for that sort of rock and roll sort of driven sound. They've got high out output. Um, because you've got two, basically you've got two single coil pickups and they're wired in opposing sort of directions, wound in different directions. So they, they cancel out that sort of static you can get sometimes on sort of single coil pickups. So that's quite nice. When you're using cheaper kit, maybe um, it, you know, it doesn't doesn't hurt your tone. Gives a nice loud output and gets rid of some of the background noise. And these are Alenco Classics. Don't really know much about them, but they're they're vintage style pickup. Now, what I particularly liked about the G400, and one of the reasons why I chose it, um, was I thought, well, a it looks really nice. B it's the right price, and certainly local store, Manson's in Exeter did me a great deal on it. Um, do support your local stores. Um, but also it had a versatility, versatility of tone. So you've got two humbucking pickups. You've got a three-way selector there. So you can go neck, neck and bridge and bridge. So each bringing a slightly different tone. You've got independent volumes. So you can sort of blend between the two, independent tones, not something I've ever really used that much, but you know, they're there. But more importantly, you've got 
coil taps. So these pick uh, these pots, these volume controls are push pull. So you can pop them in, in and out. And what that does is it splits these into single coils. So you can have a, a neck pickup with a single coil, bridge pickup with a single coil, and certainly if you want to sort of get a versatility of tone, it's not all about that Gibson driven humbucker sound with this guitar. You can split the pickups and get that sort of slightly more, maybe if you want to say a fendery sort of sound, um, more jangly, certainly on the on the neck pickup. So that's really nice to be able to do that. Obviously you've still got all the stickers on here. Those, these will be coming off straight after the video. So you've got the bit which says about the coil tapping pickups. You've got about um, the Allen Co pickups there. And you've just got a bit of protective film on here with a little uh, 3D barcode thing, which I think just takes you to the online spec. So that's a lot about the, the versatility of the guitar. Tuning stability, versatility, good looks, really nice. Um, nice contours, oh, nice contours all round. Um, looks really good. If I flip it over, see the back. You see, obviously, the um, access to the electrics there. You never really need to take that off. I've had it off, so to speak. I've taken that off. Um, and all very neat in there. I think probably maybe the shielding could be a bit better, but it's caused me no problems. The wiring's really neat. Um, the pots are all full size, so the, the volume control, all that sort of stuff. They're all sort of, there's no cheapness in there. It's all really good. Um, a few more contours on the back there. For comfort, oh, sorry, out of shot there. For comfort there, just on the rib cage, around right there. And obviously the, the strap lock button there. Oh, sorry, this, the strap button. Slightly unusual position. Most of the time it would be on the end of the upper horn. Um, can lead to some grumbles about you know, the, the guitar being front heavy, but yeah, it doesn't make much odds to me. Now, onto the material of the guitar. Um, as I say, it is all mahogany. That's no lie, it certainly is. Um, but, interestingly, this nice woody bit you see is actually a veneer. So what you've got, and you probably won't be able to see it because I can't see it to be honest, the, the inner core there of the body is actually five pieces of mahogany. And to make it look really nice, they've just popped a veneer, very thin sheet of wood, very sort of classic guitar making trick really. Um, very thin veneer all over the top, so it looks like one perfect bit of mahogany. And, you know, to be honest, it looks absolutely perfect and there's no issues there but that if you wanted to look at any cost cutting on this guitar it'd be that sort of thing but that's really only a focus on getting a good look you know if they want to do it cheap they just paint it all okay moving along a bit obviously you've got the the set neck which means you don't have any bolts there as you may normally find good for tone good for sustain on the neck, there is also another sort of cost cutting exercise because you'll look there, there's a slight join and that's a scarfed piece of wood. So it means they don't need to find a perfect bit of mahogany that thick. They only need to find a perfect bit of mahogany half as thick and then they just fill in that bit with another bit. And likewise, at the head, there's another scarf joint there. Nothing to worry about, standard practice really. But moving up the neck, you see nice mother of pearl style trapezoid inlays. No binding. You don't get that until you spend a bit more money, really, but it looks absolutely fine. Rosewood fingerboard, I think it is. It's got a nice chunky profile to the neck, so it's not super fast, thin, but it's quite a nice hand filler. Not too much hard work, to be honest. Then moving up to the top there. Oh, how do I get that into shot? Moving up to the top there, you've got a nice nut, nicely placed. Got the truss rod cover, 
and you've got some really nice genuine mother of pearl inlays. The inlays all round on this are excellent as is found on most guitars now because they can laser cut everything, they can mill it out electronically um, with CNC machines and inlays these days are absolutely perfect, really really good. So yeah that, that's pretty much head to toe, just flipping around the other side of the neck. Oh. Just looking at tuners there for a second. Nice, good quality Epiphone branded tuners. The plastic um, heads there add to the look, they add to that vintage look. Um, in a sense, I kind of prefer metal ones because these are the bits that you might wallop on something accidentally. And actually, you know, is plastic going to be tougher than metal? No, it's not, but maybe it's just a case of looking after your guitar. Little label there which says handcrafted in China, so again, that's how they keep their costs down. No issues at all. Chinese production, absolutely fantastic. And yeah, all in all, a really good guitar. Um, certainly something I'd recommend for a beginner. And uh, the price is really not too bad. As I say, the RRP on this is 299. Um, Manson's actually did a brilliant deal between this and the, and the um, boss. Um, price matching a, a sort of a national company, definitely worth um, talking to your local music shop because you do need that local support sometimes. So yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, why would you choose this, or why would you choose a Gibson for probably three, four times the price over this? Um, I mean, I think Gibsons retain their value better. They probably don't have some of these issues about um, constructions. They probably are one piece of mahogany. They probably don't have scarf sections in their neck. They probably have slightly better pickups, but you know, at the end of the day, if you're starting out and playing guitar, I don't see why you'd want to spend the extra money. This looks absolutely the part. It plays wonderfully. Um, just a really nice guitar for the money. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, something new for my channel. I hope I've shared something useful. Obviously, there's lots of videos for this guitar, and uh, I just thought I'd share my particular input, uh, my particular outlook on it. And I'm very pleased. Um, obviously, give me your comments, share your thoughts. If you've got this guitar, tell me what's um, your opinion and uh, what's good about it, what's not good about it. Um, tell me about what other products you recommend. And I'll probably do a follow-up video on the uh, the Boss Katana because that really is a cracking amp, um, really good. And uh, well, maybe we'll leave it there. Okay. Well, if you want to check out my channel, um, typically not music stuff, um, everyday carry knives, pens, um, jeans, um, fountain pens, footwear, that sort of thing. Have a look. Um, we might share some other common interests. And uh, if you like the video, please press like and uh, subscribe to my channel. Okay, hope that's useful. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.